As we learned with the scissors principle, cutting words off the slides can help people learn and engage. When I learned about this, I was tempted to just throw out the slides and teach with my voice. You know, old school. This way of teaching is unforgiving, and it doesn't take full advantage of how our brains work. It's unforgiving because if a student misses anything, it's gone. If a student's in my class and their mind wanders off, they can't easily catch up again without some slides or prompts. If they don't hear something right, there's no way they can self-correct. It also doesn't take advantage of our two channels of processing information. Remember that we have a channel for hearing and one for seeing. And when these two channels complement each other, students learn better. One easy way to do this is to put some minimal key points on the slides. Most lecturers already do this, and it's called the redundancy effect. The redundancy effect is where we learn better from spoken information when it's also accompanied by written information. Instead of just explaining an assignment, explain it while also providing some key points in writing. A meta-analysis of 57 studies found that doing so has a small positive effect on learning. This was particularly important in the classroom, where learners aren't in control of the pacing. And linking to the scissors from before, it didn't help when there was already graphics or animations on the learning materials. Basically, when you don't have any graphics or images, some key bullet points can really help people learn. This is part of the paper principle. Write down the important points so students can use both channels of learning and can catch up if they miss something. But words aren't the most useful thing you can put on a screen. Instead, pictures and graphics are usually even better. This is called the multimedia effect, where providing pictures with spoken words are even more effective than text. A meta-analysis of 17 studies found that this approach improves student learning across a whole semester. This was true for both lectures and for practicals in the lab. So the other thing we should put on paper are graphs, images, animations, or diagrams. Something that helps show the learner what you mean, in addition to you explaining it to them. This has the benefit of using both channels of information and using it in a way that they don't conflict. Images down the image pathway and voices down the voice pathway. I started taking this on board and presenting some simple graphs to make things clearer for my students. As you can see from this clip, I've tried to provide a clear graph with only four data points. To me, the graph makes a simple point, but you might not know where to start. The problem is there are 12 numbers on this graph, four labels and two titles. Unless a student's listing really closely, they might not know where to look first. I knew the important parts of the graph, but without indicating where everyone else should be focusing, it makes it hard for them to know what's really important. What I'm trying to say with the graph is that one type of self-talk, instructional self-talk for fine motor skills, is way better than the other three effects described here. All I'm focused on are these four effect size numbers, because I know the other things aren't as useful for making that conclusion. Now I've highlighted them for you, you'll probably find it easier to get it too, but this is the curse of knowledge at it again. When you know what a graph or a figure is trying to say, it's easy for it to look clear, like hearing the music from someone knocking on the table when you know the song. The curse of knowledge makes it easy for us as teachers, but difficult for learners when a graph might exceed their cognitive load. If the visual you're using is complex, then you might use arrows, circles, or highlighting to show what the most important parts of the figures are. This is called the signaling effect, and it's been shown to make it much easier for students to learn. In a recent meta-analysis of over 100 studies and 10,000 participants, signaling was shown to have big effects on lots of outcomes. As you can see from this graph, it helps students learn new content, but also transfer that content to other skills. This may be because they spend more time focusing their attention on areas of interest. And by focusing on those areas of interest, students take in less unnecessary information, meaning they have a better management of their cognitive load. All this means that they learn the material in less time, and they're more motivated and happy about the experience. Not bad for a few arrows, if you get my point point because arrows point at stuff. So the paper principle acknowledges that minds of our students are going to wander and they learn better when seeing as well as hearing. As a result, it says we should put the following on paper, ideally an image with some signaling, but at least some bullet points to summarize the key points. Hey John, you want to hear my joke about paper? Nah, never mind, it's terrible. Get it? Terrible, terrible.